This is episode 11 of It Just Has to Work. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to resurrect a completely flat battery. Now, this particular Odyssey battery, the 925, was dead for at least six weeks. When I realized that the power was still on to it and it had drained itself, it had been about six weeks. It was in my snowblower and I measured the voltage at six volts, which pretty much means it is dead. Now, the reason why I wanted to try to recover it was run at least eight years. This one was five years old and I wanted to get three more years out of it because on average, these batteries are running between $230 and $250 a piece. So I was going to have a go at trying to save it. Now, during the summer, that battery resides in my Jacobson LT100 lawnmower. Then, in the winter, it resides in my Snowhog 2 snowblower. Initially, the blower came with a standard lawnmower battery. Well, the problem with that lawnmower battery is, one, it wasn't very good quality, and two, in the winter, trying to spin that motor over the starter motor is very tiny on that Honda industrial engine. And even though I went to 5W20 synthetic oil, still it didn't want to spin over very good. So I got the idea of using this UTV battery to produce a higher voltage to spin the starter over as fast as I could to get it to start. So for five years, I've been switching it back and forth. And it's worked up until it didn't. Here is the specs on that battery. It's 330 coal crank amps, just like the lawnmower. However, it will produce 900 crank amps for five seconds to start the blower. And it really spins it over when it's down around zero. So it's an expensive battery. It's a heavy battery. It's worth trying to fix it. Because I used some solid states, I had this auto charger from Schumacher. It was supposed to charge anything. But the problem with these new style chargers is if the battery is weak, it will tell you the battery is dead and it refuses to charge it. This clip coming up here, you can see what it tells you. After reading that, and I knew that it was lying, I pulled out my old Sears Craftsman 6 amp manual battery charger that I've owned for 50 years. The thing about these is, it doesn't care what the condition of the battery is. You hook up the clamps, set it to 12 volt, turn it on, and it will try to charge it. What I ended up doing was I let that manual charger set at one amp charge, that's what the needle read, for three days. Nothing happened for the first couple days. The third day, the resistance was finally worn down internally and it started to charge. At the end of three days, I put the Schumacher automatic one on and now with the voltage up to around 10 and a half, 11 volts, it was happy and it would start to charge the battery. It said 53%. So I left that for another three days. So now we're six days in, and at the end of the sixth day, the auto charger said it was fully charged. But was it? So I got out the load tester and did a, a load test on the battery.
and as you can see it pulled 400 amp which is pretty darn good for a five-year-old battery that had been dead for six weeks what you should take from this is if you've got a new style battery charger you will be throwing batteries away and they may still be good you may be able to save them I would suggest you acquire one of the old style battery chargers and when you have a very low battery start with that and bring it up I mean I use that battery charger for 50 years until I got the new whiz bang one to do solid state and it may do solid state a whole lot better than the Sears Craftsman but as far as a wet cell the old battery charger is still superior.